The European Le Mans series is back for 2021. Bigger, better and more exciting than ever with a six-race schedule that starts at Barcelona in April. In the LMGT category, a former ELMS champion and multiple WEC and Le Mans winner returns. Jimmy Bruni should be a great asset for reigning champion Christian Reed and the 77 Proton Competition Porsche. Their main Ferrari challenger could be the number 80 from Iron Lynx with another ELMS comeback in the shape of WEC regular Miguel Molina. To defend their LMP3 titles, United Autosport duo Wayne Boyd and Rob Weldon welcomed young Frenchman Edouard Coopé, a two-time race winner in the 2020 Michelin Le Mans Cup. Another young gun worth keeping an eye on will be Belgian Hugo de Wilde. He joins 2020 runners-up Martin Hipper and inter Europol competition. Three new teams and a lot of renewed driver lineups, the cards will be reshuffled this year in LMP2. Phil Hansen, the reigning champion, with Philippe Albuquerque and the 22 United Autosports crew, will team up this year with DTM driver Jonathan Aberdyne and Tom Gamble, last year's LMP3 champion. One cars ready to race here in Barcelona. Polman, Roman Rusinov for G-Drive. Very slow though. Look at this. Nearly a lot of contact behind. And the red lights remain on. Away we go. Roman Rusinov getting the jump ahead of Louis Delatraz from WRT who starts on the outside of the front row of the grid. He tucks into second. Defend against the Panis and Dragon Speed cars on row two. United side by side on row three as the season gets underway here and trouble immediately the 32 United car is off and in the gravel Nico Jama avoids the barriers but he will be stuck pit entry closed safety car leader slow down not a great start thanks to Roman Rusinov Nico Jama paid the price Battle for the lead, Louis Delatraz almost on the grass down the inside into turn one. Roman Rusinov on the outside, late, late, late on the brakes, loses the lead and it looks like the United car will go by for second as well. Rusinov in the pits, hands over to Franco Colapinto from Argentina. Quick stop for WRT, Louis Delatraz stays in. GT leader Paolo Roberti increasing his advantage over the rest of the field. LMP3, Lawrence Hur leading for DKR Engineering. They are the benchmark team in this category. Driver change at Iron Links, and this is Claudio Schiavoni taking over from Paolo Ruberti. Franco Colapinto in traffic in the G Drive cars, just gone by the IDEX Sport car, Paul Loup Chatin, who comes back on the inside. There's contact. Chatin goes through, back into his place, and Colapinto loops around. The G-Drive 26 car in fifth place. Uh, he avoided danger there. Just double pit stops for G-Drive. Oh, and trouble. The 25 car hits the tyre left out by the 26 crews. There will be penalties, surely. Leader in the pits, Louis Delatraz to hand over to Yiffy Yi, the reigning Asian Le Mans Series champion, new to ELMS. In the green highlights, that's Rene Binder for Duquesne. Right behind him, Franco Colapinto boxes Binder in, going the long way round the outside. Good move by Colapinto. Moves up into fourth place for G-Drive. Great battle for the lead of GTE. And this is the Ferrari of Matteo Crossoni attacking Jimmy Bruni in the 77 Proton competition. Porsche gets the inside line for Iron Lynx. And Jimmy Bruni hangs on, comes back underneath him, and they avoid contact, but advantage Iron Lynx. Jimmy Bruni in the pits to hand over to team boss Christian Reed. They'll take that bit of debris out of the front. 
Tom Gamble with Will Stevens all over the back of the 22 United car. Gamble hanging on to second place. Ex Grand Prix driver Will Stevens comes through on the inside. Has the Panis Racing driver got the grip to hang on here? He does. Just gets through. Nice stuff. Duquesne's Rennie Binder under pressure from Jean-Baptiste Lahaye. This is the battle for fifth position now. The Duquesne driver drifts out a little wide. Lahaye for ultimate on the inside. This is going to be close. He just squeezes through down into the chicane. Side by side for third. Nick De Vries in 26 holding third. But look at Tom Gamble, the United Autosports driver, all over the back of the Dutchman. De Vries holding the inside line, but drifts out wide here, he's in tyre trouble and Gamble's got more grip, turns inside, through he goes, great pass for the United Autosports driver, up to third now. Tom Gamble right up behind Yiffy Yi in traffic going by the Iron Dames Ferrari, a lap down Tom Gamble in third place but with a tyre advantage over the WRT machine, goes to the outside, cuts back to the inside. If a year he had no answer to that, Gamble unlaps himself, still in third. Nick De Vries from G-Drive under pressure again as they catch the Iron Dames Ferrari. Behind him is Mathieu Lahaye in the ultimate car, the other of the Lahaye brothers. And it looks like he's got a little bit more pace than the G-Drive car as well. And again on the inside, same as Tom Gamble, same place. De Vries can't hold the line, but tries to cut back underneath the Ferrari. Didn't realise the ultimate car was there. And La Haye moves up. Leader in the pits again. Yiffy has done his stint. Now time for Robert Kubica, the ex-Grand Prix ace from Poland. Full season programme here with WRT. Looking back from the 93 Porsche in fifth place, there is Jonathan Aberdyne under pressure from behind. 28 IDEX Sport car, Patrick Pile, himself a longtime GT Porsche driver. Pile in the LMP2 car goes through on the inside as they pass the green 93 Porsche. Working their way through traffic, the opportunity arose. Pile took it with both hands. Here is the battle that the 93 Porsche was in with Rahal Frey, the Iron Lynx 83 car, the all-female crew car, Philippe Lazare in the green Porsche. Drifts out a little wide under braking and through goes Rahal Frey. She moves up to fifth. Louis Delatraz summoning up the feelings in WRT, I think. Final lap of the race for this full season debutante in the LMS. The WRT team with such a great history in other forms of racing and they win on their debut in European Le Mans series. Victory in LMP2 for WRT, for Robert Kubica, Louis Delatraz and Yiffe Ye. Great start to the LMP3 season for Cool Racing. Matt Bell takes the number 19 car to the line, winning with teammates Nicola Maulini and Nicholas Croyton. It's a winning return to ELMS for Miguel Molina. The chequered flag is out. It will be victory for the number 80 Iron Lynx Ferrari crew. Molina, Matteo Cressoni and Reno Mastronardi. Reigning in Spain, WRT. It means a lot to us, to the team as well. I think everyone did a really good job. We prepared hard, it was never going to be easy, but I mean, we had a good quality, good start. I could take the lead and then, I mean, everyone did a perfect job, so. I think that's a good way to start the season, so really uh, thank you to everyone. Winners of the brand new LMP2 Pro-Am category are ultimate. Well, uh, it feels great uh, for our first race, especially that uh, last year we didn't race at all, so we come back uh, as a LMP2 team and uh, we win the first race as Pro-Am, so it's like a dream. Iron Lynx win in GTE. Amazing job uh, from the team. Uh, how I can say, with uh, two teammates like this, Reno super fast, Miguel even more. We had a puncture, honestly, we are a little bit lucky, uh, but uh, anyway, we, we, it's the result that uh, we deserve. And a big day in LMP3 for Cool Racing. It was a tough, tough, tough race here. Tire management was uh, the, the biggest part of it. And our front tyres were absolutely gone uh, in those last 20 minutes, so I was just kind of trying to manage pace, manage traffic. But these guys set me up, got me to the front, and I was able to hold off the challenge, and we brought it home. Really happy. Drivers and teams visited the Red Bull Ring in May for round two.
Sally Ollis for Racing Team Turkey pacing the field. Diego Manchaka alongside for Algarve Pro. Then Nico Jaman looking down the inside as the lights change. John Falk for G-Drive on the outside. Jaman backed out of that first corner challenge. John Falk though kept his nerve. And down to the hairpin. It is the G-Drive car that leads. John Falp ahead of Polman Sally Yolich with the United car in third. Oh, trouble under braking. Rob Hodes and contact. Takes out the green and yellow. Alessandro Bressan and Elit Twille in the Graf racing car also couldn't avoid contact. Hodes in the Team Virage car looped around. Safety car is out. Back to green flag racing. Phil Hansen down the inside of Sally Yolich for third place. And he's alongside again. Hansen really pushing hard the United car. Yolich with the inside line. Can he hold the tight exit? Phil Hansen comes back at him underneath for third place. United second and third now. But Yolich comes back once more underneath. The Turkish driver not giving this one up. Lead battle, John Falk for G-Drive. Nico Jamin in the 32 United car. They had such a tough start in Barcelona off at the very first corner, but now squeezes through for the lead of the race. John Falk again, deja vu. The United car right behind this time. There is 22. This is Phil Hansen. Hansen for second. It's a United 1-2. Nico Jamin leads. Phil Hansen second. John Falk down to third in the G-Drive number 25 car. Roman Rusinov for G-Drive, having an attack here on Sally Olic, got through at the hairpin, they split themselves around the Iron Lynx car, and it looks as though he's made that move stick for fourth. Fuel finished for the WRT car number 41, our winners in Barcelona, and away goes Yefeye. Race on pit lane. G-Drive car squeezing out though. Oh, that's very close. Was that unsafe release? Nick de Vries is in front, but by inches. Battle fourth in LMP3 being passed by Sally Olich. Here's a chance for Rory Penton and squeezes down the inside. Contact with Mikey Benham though. The RLR M Sport car goes round and contact with Penton as well. The Graf team can't believe it. Lot of work to do. Sixth place battle in LMP2. It exports Paul Lafargue under pressure from Rene Binder with the green highlights and the Duquesne engineering car slides down the inside into turn one. The uphill braking area gives him the advantage. Clean move. Leaders are in, 26 G drive. Nick DeFree stays in. WRT are in as well from second place. See them in the background. Driver change, Robert Kubica taking over from Yiffy Yi. Clean screen, full tank of gas and four fresh tires for the Polish driver. Porsche versus Ferrari for fourth place in GTE. Richard Leitz on the inside of Rodrigo Sales slips past. Straightforward move by the Austrian Porsche factory driver here on home turf. Third place battle in LMP2 now. It's all united. 22 behind Jonathan Aberdeen coming underneath Manuel Maldonado. The Venezuelan driver with the South African inside. Can't hold on. Change of place for third spot. 22 is in front. Good battle for seventh place in LMP2. Richard Bradley under pressure from Paul-Luc Chatin. The Ida Export car drifts by as the Algarve Pro machine runs out wide. We are declaring the track wet. We are declaring the track wet. Trouble in the rain for Giorgio Sanagiotto, the 60 Ferrari from Iron Lynx. Wow, big high speed lose. Definitely not the grip he was expecting there as he ran into the rain shower. United in the pits, Jonathan Aberdeen stopping. And it looks as though wet weather tyres will be the order of the day. Rui Andrade brings the 26 G Drive car in as well. And cars off everywhere. Race director scrambling the safety car. I'm not surprised. The gravel traps are full. Back to green flag racing in the rain. Battle for fifth. Edex Sport. Patrick Pile. Ooh, big wobble there as Roberto Mary tried to go by. Clattered Mary just a little bit. 
Roberto Merido sticking to his task. Patrick Pile for Edex Sport. Look how wet it is. And Mary with the inside line. Surely this is where the pass goes through at the uphill hairpin. Yeah, Pile having no answer there. No traction at all available on that tight inside line. Roberto Mary moves on for G Drive. Roberto Mary putting in a stellar drive, attacking Mathieu A in the ultimate machine for fourth place. Straight through he goes. A little bit of contact, but didn't look too damaging for either car. Mary really enjoying these conditions. Tom Gamble now is the victim for Roberto Mary. United Autosport car eases him out wide, but that was only because Gamble outbraked himself, squirming for grip. Roberto Mary with a little more to play with. LMP3 leader is Matt Bell. Cool Racing looking for their second straight win to start the season. Final splash of fuel for G-Drive. They needed this. They didn't have any option, but it drops them right into the clutches of WRT. He's right in front of you. He's right in front of you. Go for it. Setting up a fantastic battle. Louis Delatraz chasing Franco Colapinto on the exit of the corner. Colapinto comes out of the pits just ahead. Delatraz with a little momentum on the drying track, but Colapinto keeps his nose in front for the moment. This is for the lead with under half an hour left to race. So who has got what it takes? Colapinto with track advantage, WRT and Delatraz with a little bit more momentum. Colapinto's going to have to be very good in traffic here. Oh, and he drifts out a little wide on the curbs, no traction. Here comes the WRT car, Louis Delatraz takes the lead away. Yes, they go. Checker flag is out. Louis Delatraz still struggling for grip in the final corner, but it's a second straight win in LMP2 for WRT, the newcomers to the championship. Vincent Vos, Thierry Tassan and the team are thrilled with that. Third place for the 25 G-Drive car gives them Pro-Am victory. Last lap dramas for Matt Bell and Cool Racing. Joey Alders closing behind and Matt Bell at the line by 11 hundredths of a second. A second straight win for Cool Racing. Alessio Rivera seals GT victory for the 88A of Corsa Ferrari. Francois Prode and Malu Collar couldn't race in Barcelona, but they claim victory here. We were not thinking to go get two wins out of two. Uh, it has been a difficult race with difficult conditions. Uh, we managed uh, making good decisions, good calls and uh, yeah, uh, good drive from all my teammates, good job from the team and uh, it wasn't easy but uh, again we haven't done any mistakes. Uh, we keep it clean and tidy and uh, yeah, that's uh, fundamental. WRT the winners with G-Drive taking second and third and Pro-Am win for the third place number 25 car. What a crazy race. Um, the start was amazing. Uh, we were in the lead for quite a while. Then the safety car came and uh, lost a couple positions after that. We were fighting uh, mid-pack. Rui did a fantastic job. And then we put uh, Roberto in the car and he did an amazing job. Their first race starts of the season and they of course claim victory. It's a tough track, so starting with the double stint was not easy for me, but uh, plus I got to drive through for track limits, so it's, uh, it was complicated. Then Manu took the wheel and uh, I mean he had a terrible stint, I think he was on slick tyres during a downpour. Then uh, Alesso brought her home, so a really exciting race all the way to the last, uh, last lap, so no, great for us, good result. Unbelievably tight in LMP3, but the 19 Cool Racing crew come out on top for a second straight race. Brilliant strategy from the team. It was a strategy race, that one in the end. Uh, awesome call from the Cool Racing guys to give me the gap. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I was able to hold on at the end. So great team result. That the circuit Paul Ricard at Le Castellet was the venue for round three in June.
Roman Rusinov starts on pole again for G-Drive. Yiffy Yee alongside for WRT, the points leaders. Lights are out and they fan out down the straight into the tight first corner chicane. United Autosport car on the runoff area, challenging for the lead, but it's Yiffy Yee who goes around the nose of Rusinov. Lead battle in GTE, Ollie Hancock in the TF Sport Aston dives down the inside of Christian Reed in the 77 Proton Porsche. Duncan Cameron right behind in the white and green Spirit to race Ferrari. Christian Reed struggling a little for pace. Here comes Francois Perodo in the 88A of Corsa Ferrari. This is for fourth place in GTE. And the Porsche slips another spot. The 88 team won last time out after missing Barcelona. They need another victory here to get right back in the championship hunt. On board with Hollywood star Michael Fassbender. Closing in on the Ferrari in front. Looking to slipstream his way past Manuela Gosner in the Iron Dames Ferrari. Which way is he going to go? She closes the door on the inside into Senior, then sweeps out to the racing line. Fassbender sticks to the inside. That means he's going to drift out wide, but she can't take advantage. Through comes the 22 United car. And that worked well for the Proton competition driver. The Irish-American actor is up to sixth place. Cool Racing and Edex Sport. Giving away a tail on the Mistral straight here is almost impossible to counter-attack. The Edex Sport with a good head of speed. Straight by he goes. Paul Lafargue takes fifth straight forwardly from Alexandre Coigny. Path for eighth in LMP2, Vincent Capillier drifting out wide in the Graf racing car. Jonathan Aberdyne goes straight by him, chasing down the G-Drive number 25 car just in front. John Falp, the two-time Pro-Am winner this season in the G-Drive car. Double Edouard de Bosse and Michael Fassbender going for a gap that was always going to close. Clatters Manuela Gosner and he may have damage. The Iron Dames car definitely does. He tries to avoid the contact, but it's pretty inevitable. The second hit, though, is the one that's going to badly damage both cars. Into the pits, trailing the rear end, Manuela Gosner, the innocent victim in that one. A lot of work going on, too, at Proton Competition to repair Fassbender's car. How international is the ELMS? Well, in LMP3, you've got a Luxembourg team with a French driver, a Swiss team with a German driver, ahead of a Polish team with a Lithuanian driver. All Dutch battle for the lead. Jop van Eutert in the 32 United car. This is the view of Nick de Vries for G-Drive in their number 26 machine. WRT in third place, two-time winners this season already, but with an hour to go, it does look as though it might be G-Drive versus United to the flag. De Vries all over the back of Van Eytert and traffic ahead for the younger of the Dutchmen. He's got an ex-Grand Prix ace right behind. De Vries lunges deeper to the inside. Catches Van Eytert by surprise. Van Eytert opens the steering and avoids contact. But it is Nick De Vries in front in the number 26 G-Drive car. WRT's Louis Delatraz is under real pressure down the straight, giving away a big toe to Tom Gamble for United Autosports. It's how he times the pass. Gamble goes outside into senior, but there's a P3 car. Can he complete the move cleanly? He does, and then has enough room to sweep by as well. Great work by the United driver. Blue on blue for second. Van Eytert leading the fast approaching Tom Gamble. The longer Van Eytert fights, the closer Louis Delatraz is going to be. Van Eytert drifts out wide, allows Tom Gamble through. That's wise. Shuts the door. Keeps Louis Delatraz behind him. Final stop for G-Drive. No dramas. De Vries stays in. Checker flag awaits our class leaders. The first to it will be Nick De Vries in the number 26 G-Drive car. It'll be their first win of the season. The Dutchman out of the final corner. They claim victory in the four hours of Le Castellet. A very happy Roman Rusinov hugs team boss Samantha Cox. 
Victory in GTE for the Iron Lynx number 80 car, their second win of the season and breaking the cool racing streak, DKR's number four machine comes to the line to claim LMP3 victory. Finally we get it, I think we put everything together, the car was fast, my teammate did a really good job, Nick was extremely fast, Franco as well, and I think the strategy wise we was also quite, uh, quite on the right way, you know, so I think, yeah, I'm really happy about that. for Racing Team Turkey, its first uh, class win in prototypes. Um, Charlie and Sally did a fantastic job to set the race up. Really happy and, and, and thankful to everyone involved. Today was tough. It was really, really difficult race, especially because we, we knew that the tire management will, would be the, the key of, of, the, of the race. But at the end, today we, was our day and the team, one, one more time, they are working so hard. That was a really enjoyable car today. We've been working so much during the winter and it finally pays off. I mean, finally we're back to the, to the form we had in 2019 where this car is the quickest on track. It feels amazing. I've been waiting for this day quite a long time now and um, the team did just an amazing job. I mean, everything went perfect. Uh, Jean-Philippe did an amazing job and uh, we just dominated the race. Round four in July was at the historic Autodromo Nazionale di Monza. Roman Rusinov pacing the field again from pole position. United's Phil Hansen, Yiffy Yi from WRT, second and third on the grid. We go green in Monza. The charge down to the first corner. Yiffy Yi on the inside for WRT. Will he outbreak Phil Hansen? Hansen goes around his nose. Trouble behind. Sally Olic turns around the Algarve Pro car. Richard Bradley nose to nose with Henrik Hedman in the Dragon Speed entry. Everybody else just about making their way through without too much drama. The cars straight lining the chicane. Roman Rusinov leading from Phil Hansen and Yiffy Yi. Sally Ulrich in fourth top pro-am car. Jockeying for position behind the 25 G-Drive car. Battle for six in GTE. Manuela Gosner down the inside of Michael Fassbender. Don't forget there was big contact in Paul Ricard when Fassbender hit the Iron Dames car. She gets through cleanly though. LMP2 lead group is right behind these cars and Roman Rusinov under real pressure. Can Phil Hansen find a way to get through? Rusinov is trying to close the gap. The WRT car is right there as well. Manuela Gosta on the outside trying to hold off the Porsche. Across the line they come, top three all together. United Autosports and WRT looking for a way by the G-Drive car. Hansen dives to the inside, takes the lead. Now can Yiffy Yi come by as well? I think that was a big surprise there for Roman Rusinov. Yiffy Yi trying to come around the outside down into Variante Ascari. Huge moment for Rusinov. He hangs onto the car, but not the place. He's down to third. Two and a half hours remaining. Full course yellow. James Allen leading for Panis right now from the 22 United car. Could do with a good race here in Monza. Panis racing. Driver change as Will Stevens takes over the lead car from James Allen. Lead battle in GTE, Matteo Crisoni ahead of the Spirit of Race Ferrari. The 55 car pulls out. Matt Griffin normally drives this car. Wasn't available this weekend because of family issues, but handily being in Italy, they found an Italian who was available. Former GTE world champion Alessandro Pierre Guidi, and he takes the lead of the class. Restarting after the full course yellow, back to green and here's the battle for third place. Louis Delatraz has to go around the bollard, almost down the pit road, battling with Jasmine Jafar in the green Jota car. They go either side of the Iron Dames. 
The Jyoti car having a little warm up for them on. And Jafar, highly experienced sports car ace from the World Endurance Championship, just holds on around the outside. And Louis Delachaz can't quite squeeze through. Well, that was an electrifying restart for both men. Checker flag awaits. Will Stevens brings the 65 car to the line. It's victory in Monza for Panis Racing. Yes, baby! Wow! And there is Olivier Panis. He is delighted. 25 G Drive take their second Pro Am win of the season. LMP3 win. A second straight win for the number four DKR engineering machine and Spirit of Race win in Monza in GTE. Yeah. Come on, come on. It's great, I mean, I've been with this team, this is my fourth year. Um, it's been a project that we're trying to push hard and you know, we keep chipping away every year and this year we're really fighting for podiums on pace and I'm just so happy for the guys and girls in the team because they work really hard. Um, it's tricky sometimes against the bigger teams, but um, we're always strong, we keep chipping away and they deserve to get one. Nobody's making it easy for us, that's for sure. Um, yeah, it was an exciting race. I mean, we started P14, it was a rough deal. I got shoved off track, had a spin, but we just kept pounding it out. And the strategy worked and we worked hard and yeah, on top. Fantastic weekend. Um, we have to dedicate this one to uh, to Matt. Matt Griffin is here in uh, spirit, if not in actuality. Um, his dad passed away earlier in the week, so uh, that's why uh, Alessandro is standing in for him. The car was amazing, and uh, these guys did what a fantastic job. It was a real mix of feelings. I mean, we fell a bit back uh, in the beginning, um, but uh, the car was simply amazing and we, we fought back. Uh, the team had an amazing strategy today and I was pushing like hell to, to finish my stint in, in first and Mathieu finished also a really great race today. He did a great job for, for his first race. I can just imagine the pressure on him. So I'm really proud of what he did. Round five of the series at the awesome and always challenging Spa-Francorchamps could be a title decider. Sunny day in Spa, Charles starting his first race with Cool Racing on pole in the 37 car. Phil Hansen alongside ahead of Robert Kubica and Patrick Pillay. As the lights go out, the Cool Racing car heads the charge down to the first corner. They're five wide behind, a big lockup and trouble. And contact around goes the G-Drive car. Roman Rusinov not the only person in trouble. Rodrigo Sales for JMW, trouble in the Ferrari. Makes contact with the LMP3 car. The Nielsen car is in the gravel. That's Nick Adcock in the number six machine, firmly stuck. Safety car is out. Replay of the start. Everybody steaming up to the first corner. It looks like Sally Yolich locks up here. And yeah, clatters Roman Rusinov. Cars off on the outside. A second impact does more damage. Drive-through penalty card. 34 for causing an incident at T1 at the start of the race. The number 26 car was a title contender. No more, it seems. Massive frustration for G-Drive. Oh, and the G-Drive car has stopped. Roman Rusinov out of the race and out of the championship hunt. Matt Campbell attacking Ollie Hancock in the Aston Martin for the lead in GTE. Third and fourth place are right there as well, the two Ferraris, but the Kiwi goes by and takes the lead of GTE. Duncan Cameron being chased up the hill by Michelle Gatting. The Iron Dames car has got a little bit of a run on the Spirit of Race Ferrari and slips through for fifth position. 
Michel Gatting flying now, but Francois Perodo coming back underneath the Iron Dames car for third place. Good battle going on here between the two of them. Oh, trouble at Lake Homme. Safety car out. We are under safety car. We are under safety car. At Algarve Pro and Spirit to Race, what happens here? Diego Manchaka hits Mikey Burnham in the RLR M Sport LMP3 car. Manchaka with a lot of damage on the left front corner, and it looks like he's trying to rejoin. Trying to find a gap in traffic. Pulls onto the track very slowly, and this is where we're going to find, yes, Spirit of Race car has nowhere to go. Back to green flag racing at Spa. WRT leading the charge across the line. Edex Sport in second. Battle for third behind. Cool racing. 37 and down the inside comes the Panis car at La Source. Julian Canal goes by Alexandre Coigny. On board with Mathieu de Barbois, young Frenchman, a winner. First time out with DKR in LMP3, last time out at Monza, and they lead again. Claudio Schiavone in the Iron Lynx Ferrari versus Michael Fassbender in the Porsche. Battle for sixth place in GT, there's contact. Well, Fassbender couldn't quite hang on to that one. Stuck his nose on the inside, and it has cost him two spots. GT leader Christian Reed under real pressure now from Reno Mastronardi coming down the hill. Mastronardi flashing the headlights. Reed struggling to keep the Porsche online. Here comes the Iron Lynx Ferrari through the inside. And down towards the braking area for Piff Paff. The Porsche with the inside line, but Mastronardi goes the long way around the outside and takes the lead. Robert Kubica watching WRT teammate Yefe Ye battling for the lead in Spa with United Autosports. Manuel Maldonado goes up the inside into Le Camp. Which way will the Aston go? It falls nicely for Yefe Ye. He has to go onto the curbs to get by, but get by he does, and he's got the lead. These are the dominant forces in LMP3 this season. We're on board. Here's the DKR car, Lawrence Hur, Niklas Kreuten in the 19 cool racing car that won the first two races. The last two have gone to the number four machine. Here's the pass from on board with Lawrence Hur. Slipstream passed up the Kemmel straight. Bye-bye. Trouble for into Europol, a wrecked car. That's Aidan Reed. He's okay. That's a campus, used to be... Stavolo, and he's just run out of road and hit the barriers hard. Oh, goodness. Didn't slow the car much either, did it, as he just clipped it and took that left front wheel off. Great battle for third place here. Look at the Duquesne car. That's Tristan Gomery throwing it down the inside into La Source. James Allen has to take avoiding action in the Panis car. Loses a potential podium spot. The United 32 right in front. WRT leading this race. Well, here comes the Panis car. Tristan Gomedy helpless. He's giving away the slipstream to James Allen. The Aussie comes a long way around the outside. Now he's also picking up the two from the United Auto Sports car. And despite bravery under braking, Tristan Gomedy cannot hang on to third place. Great wheel to wheel racing here. Up the Camel Straight, the battle for second in GTE. Cooper McNeil in the white Proton competition weather tech car. Pulling out the slipstream, Matteo Crisoni. Can he get it done around the outside? Yes, he does. Cooper McNeil didn't have quite enough grip to fight him off. Jupp van Oetert around the outside of Will Stevens for third. Panis Racing Car, the winner last time out in Monta. Coming back at him into the bus stop. Goes outside, inside. Great attack from Will Stevens. And Van Eitert squirming. Here we go. Dutchman's got the run again. Up the hill. Will Stevens on the inside. Side by side at Lake Homme. And just about hang on. Both going off track. Will Stevens determined to hang on here. Van Eitert determined to get by. Brilliant battle for third place. It's still raging. Van Eitert around the outside as he got the grip. Stevens with a much tighter line there at Brussel. Will Stevens in third still. 
Last lap in Spa. WRT will win again with the race. Will go the championship. Louis Delatraz brings the 41 car to the line. Ooh, you made it, my friend. The universe champion. Great job, Louis. Great management. Yes, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Good job, everyone. You're the best, man. Great champion. Thank you, really. To my both teammates, did an amazing job. After the cruel disappointment of losing Le Mans, they win the ELMS title. It's a great moment for all the team, for what they achieved during the year and what they have done also in Le Mans, what happened in Le Mans. It's a great way to, uh, to snap the championship here at home. Amazing. I mean, they both did a great job. They gave me the car. I just had to, to bring it home uh, and, and save some fuel. I mean, but yeah, it's down to the team first year and uh, first championship. So really thank you to everyone and I had uh, an amazing year and we still have one to go. Victory at home in Spa could hardly be sweeter. WRT are the ELMS champions and with that goes the first of two invitations to Le Mans 24 hours. G-Drive will come under pressure from Panis and United Autosport for the other one in the finale in Portimao. Cool Racing claimed their first Pro-Am win. Well, it's fantastic for us because we've been waiting for this uh, this Pro-Am victory for since the beginning of the season. I think we uh, we were really happy to have Charles with us. Big, big thank you, congrats to the team because they made an amazing job the whole weekend. So yeah, so we are back on where we want to be and uh, we are really happy. The GTE win went to the number 88 AF Corsa Ferrari. I had a good fight with uh, Mastro Nardi and Michel Gatting, who are both really strong drivers. Normally, they, they, uh, they're much faster than me, so I was really happy to, to stay in the pack, in the leading pack. And then the boys did a fantastic job. We managed to stay out of trouble. And, you know, Spa on a sunny day with some spectators, nothing comes close. Bar made it four poles and three wins in a row in LMP3 for DKR Engineering's Laurence Hur, and it was a second consecutive win for his teammate Mathieu de Barbois, who joined the programme in Monza. We finished quite ahead of, of P2 today, I think. The team did an amazing job and an amazing car, and I'm really happy about the result. We are still P2 in the championship, but uh, the fight is on for Portimao, and uh, I'm excited. The season finale, Portimao. Trying to put them the future in the tires is a bit of information them. We are a bit more comfortable than you would. Sharmalazy pacing the field with Richard Bradley alongside the cool racing machine for local team Algarve Pro. Red lights a long hold and away we go. The charge down to the first corner begins. Row two at the grid, Roman Rusinov and Manuel Maldonado. And they slot in side by side. Maldonado going the long way round the outside. Cool racing lead from Algarve and United. Rusinov in fourth, desperate to take that runner-up spot in the championship. Oh, great move there from Robert Kubica. Grabs fourth from Roman Rusinov. Into Nissan battle between the United Auto Sports car, Phil Hansen and Manuel Maldonado. 22 gets its nose in front. Advantage Hansen. Well, Hansen now crucially ahead of Roman Rusinov in the second place in the championship G-Drive car. Turn one, battle for the lead in LMP3. Mathieu de Barbois around the outside of Rob Weldon in the number two United Auto Sports car. DKR man has the lead, but Weldon going the long way round. Can he climb back up the hill on the inside? No, doesn't have the traction. Looks like de Barbois has got the lead for now. A spinner, that's, oh, and a crash behind. That's Andres Lascaratos in the Villorba car. Mimo Rojas spun the Duquesne car. What happened out of the final turn? Oh, the wheel came off. And Lascaratos, the gap getting smaller and smaller. Ops for the end of the pit wall. Safety car is out. Yeah, that is a big shunt. 
And the good news is Andreas Lascaratos is stepping out of the car seemingly unharmed. That was a plane crash accident. Very worrying for everybody, but fortunately the driver is okay. Race red flagged and the clock still running. We are resuming the race behind the safety car. We are resuming the race behind the safety car. Back to green flag racing, cool racing, Sharma Lacy leading Richard Bradley and Robert Kubica. Tough battle in GTE, this is for second place, Sarabovi on the inside, goes past the 88 Ferrari, the Iron Dames looking strong here in Portimao. For the lead, Phil Hansen to the inside of Robert Kubica at the hairpin, through goes the United Autosports car, it stops underway. But right now, United going for track position. Battle for the lead in GTE. The Iron Lynx Ferrari right behind the 77 Proton Competition. Porsche Reno Mastronardi versus Christian Reed. Who's got the grip? Mastronardi has. Goes the tight way around the inside outside to take it. Third place battle in GTE. Cooper McNeil in the WeatherTech Porsche right behind Michelle Gatting for the Iron Dame. She's got a good run going here over the brow. She's on the dirt, but looking down the inside to the hairpin. Has she got the grip now on those slightly dirty tyres to stop? Yes, she does. Up to third she goes. The Iron Dame's having another very strong race here, almost always in podium contention. Yeah, with traffic here, the 32 at United Autosport Machine. That's Marcus Pommer, BHK Motorsport, who's in front. Fanoite goes inside. Pommer doesn't see him coming. There's contact. And that might be a penalty for the United team. On board with Richard Leeds in the Proton Competition Porsche, the 93 car challenging Matteo Cressoni for the lead. Richard Leeds, factory GTE Pro driver for the Porsche team. And Leeds putting in a big move here to go the long way round the outside, up the hill and take the lead. Closing stages of the season here in Portimao. Battle for the lead. Tom Gamble in front, chasing for G-Drive Nick de Vries. The Dutchman desperately trying to get by and put the win on the board. The battle for second in the championship changes hands now as G-Drive go in front. Final splash of fuel for G-Drive. Their gamble looks not to have come off. Tom Gamble leading for United Autosports from WRT, the champions. And this will put them in second in the championship with that vital second spot for them on. DKR Engineering are looking now as if they will seal the title in LMP3. Another great run of success for the number four car. Everything crossed at United. Checkered flag is out. Tom Gamble is going to take the first win of the season for the reigning champions. United Autosports number 22 win in Portimao. They will finish second in the title race. Phil had a, a great start and, you know, putting all the hard work together up there and Jonathan maintained it, extended the gap. Um, and then, yeah, you know, it was just a case of me getting in there and trying to finish the job. In the end, it panned out perfectly. And yeah, full credit to the team as always. They did a fantastic job. Um, yeah, it's great to finally get that win at the last one. A second consecutive LMP2 Pro-Am win for the number 37 from Cool Racing is not quite enough to take the title. For sure we wanted to be on the podium in general, but uh, we know that it was going to be quite hard. Uh, we had an issue with the, with the door, with the car, uh, when Alex went into the car, so we lost a couple of times, but I think uh, we can be happy with, uh, with the weekend we did. G-Drive claimed the Pro-Am crown from Cool Racing and Ultimate. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, it was a lot of work, great competition, fantastic championship. We had a great time and uh, yeah, everybody made us work hard for it. It was a lot of fun. GT winners and champions, Miguel Molina, Matteo Crisoni and Reno Mastronardi from Iron Lynx.
When you race, it's always difficult. So from the beginning, we we were focused to to do our race by race, uh, trying to maximize the our performance. I think we had a very very good uh, lineup this year. Also the team. I think uh, we all deserve this result, and yeah, we are champions. Second place for the 93 Proton Competition Porsche is the first ELMS podium for Hollywood star Michael Fassbender with Philippe Lazare and Richard Leitz. Iron Links are champions, Reno Mastronardi the first man to win GT3 in the Michelin Le Mans Cup and then GTE in ELMS and the second Le Mans invitation goes to the 55 Spirit of Race team. In LMP3 the number four from DKR Engineering crossed the line as race winner but a post-race penalty dropped them to fourth and nevertheless DKR and Lawrence Hoare clinched the LMP3 teams and drivers' titles. I'm very delighted because it was a hard weekend for us being five points behind and it just feels so good. Huge success for DKR, the new LMP3 champions. Their first title in the series after four titles in the Michelin Le Mans Cup. Cool Racing and United complete the top three. A few hours after the sixth and final round of the 2021 European Le Mans series, the awards ceremony was held at the circuit. The champions were honoured and then thoughts turned to 2022. The first race scheduled in mid-April at Le Castellet. Another whole season of fascinating stories are just waiting to be written. Yeah.